welcome to my sewing room. Today we have some really beautiful heirloom machine techniques to share with you. A little bit later on, I'll have as my guest, Marlis Bennett. Marlis is training consultant for Benina of America Incorporated. Let me share with you what I was talking about on the machine heirloom stitches. On the front of this beautiful little Swiss batiste dress is a beautiful, what I would call Swiss handloom, except guess what? This handloom was made by machine, saving lots and lots of money. This little dress also has a beautiful bodice embellishment. There are a, there's a beautiful scallop around the edge of the pinafore. And one of the sweetest things on this dress is the fact that it has a monogram on the top, or rather on the waistline of the pinafore. This is true elegance here. This little dress done out of a corduroy has beautiful double needle pin tucks on the bodice. What I really wanted you to see, this is a magnificent, very, very Victorian design done in ecru thread on ecru organdy with a double needle. Isn't that gorgeous? It looks just like hand shadow work. You can also do a lot of beautiful machine work on a christening dress. This is completely fascinating to me too. This one has the double needle pin tucks. It also has wing needle entredo, wing needle baby daisy stitching. It has scallops. And by the way, this style christening dress is very much the turn of the last century with all of its beautiful embellishment going down the front of the christening dress. And now won't you come along with me over to the technique boards. Directional stitching makes it possible for you to take a piece of linen or whatever type of fabric you would like and make a magnificent designer fabric to go along with what you're sewing. I have seen some directional stitching done, say at the factory in Switzerland or wherever the fabrics were made. I've seen directional stitching on a, on a pretty piece of fabric. I've seen those fabrics that sell from 40 to 50 to $60 a yard. Now, we're gonna show you how you can make your own and you don't have to pay 40, 50 or $60 a yard. This is one of the most adorable pinafores I've ever seen in my life. You'll notice it has a little blue, just precious print, and then the little yellow uh, quilting calico fabric. And what Marlis wanted was a third fabric to go with the little yellow, tiny print, and then the little larger print that has blue and yellow on it. So she took a piece of plain white linen and did directional stitching, and you know how I love bows. So isn't this the cutest fabric that Marlis has created with her directional stitching? And then she's used her little uh, tube ties, and the little tube ties once again are used over here on this little bow which is absolutely adorable and I want to show you also the use of the third fabric is down on the bottom of the legs of this adorable little sunsuit now I'm going to turn it around and show you that the directional fabric that Marlis created on the linen is used on the back too. It just makes this a real designer sunsuit and gave her the option of making her own fabric when she really couldn't find the third fabric to go with the other two pieces. To do directional sewing, for, and this is on linen, first of all, you trace straight lines using your ruler, using a wash away or a fade away fabric marker. Those lines are used to guide the foot now then, here is this sweet, sweet little bow, one little bow, and then it curves down another little bow and then back up. And I personally like those little stitches left in, but I think Marley said you can lengthen them and those little stitches can be taken out. Look at this adorable fabric that Marlis has created. Just absolutely precious with the little bows dancing all over the fabric and it's directional stitching that enabled her to do this. Now, I've talked a lot about Marlis, and I've talked a lot about directional stitching, so I'll come over and welcome once again to the show my very dear friend Marlis Bennett. Marlis is the training consultant for Benina of America, and thank you so much for coming back again, oh, Marlis. Thank <laughs> you for having me, because it's always so much fun for me to be here and share <laughs> our techniques with you and with the viewers. As you said, sometimes you can't find that one piece of fabric that just brings an entire grouping of different things together and makes it look like something very special that you can't buy. Because you know, as sewers, we all want something that is special, that, and that's why we and do so. Yes, <laughs> I don't want to see myself on the clothing rack. <laughs> so directional stitching allows me that opportunity because I can create my own fabric. It's so exciting. It is, and I don't have to take a lot of time. Or the, spend a lot of money, like on these right. custom fabrics. The custom fabrics are so expensive. <laughs> 
what I like to do is I like to draw lines on my fabric about two inches apart. And that's, I'm a little more uh, precise, so I like mine closer together. But I do go ahead and use a, a water soluble or an air soluble pen to draw the lines. And then I begin to stitch. Now, as I said, I'm not stitching on the line. I just use those lines as guidelines because the, foot, the machine is going to move this fabric from side to side and we're not used to stitching that way. So a lot of times when we do this technique, what happens is we tend to overcorrect. And by just remaining, remembering that our foot needs to be parallel, we can take care of a lot of those problems. This is what it looks like when it's all finished. And depending on if I wanted to take these out, there's usually a function on a machine, it's called a long stitch, and then it will only stitch every third stitch, and you can clip those threads right out only if you just wanted little tiny designs all over the fabric. But let me show you. I like those little curves myself. Oh, I thought the curves cute? were fun. I, I just love it. This has to be done on a machine that has the capacity to do the memory because you have to combine several stitches. And I've taken the little bow that you see here and put it into the memory and then I put in different steps. How far do I want it to go from here to here? I have to put in a step for each time I change direction. So I was able to do that. And then I put in another bow, and then we had to go back in the same direction. But I'm not going to start right here on a line to emphasize the point that what I'm doing is just stitching. Now, when you're working with decorative stitches, it's really important that you don't drive this machine faster than your guardian angel can fly. Because those stitches need time to, to form and to make pretty stitches. Especially when you've got to watch whether it's parallel. And I think slow is my key on that, too. Marla. Slow is my key. This is something what I call sitcom work. Sitcom. <laughs> you know, you put a sitcom on the TV and just go. notice how the fabric is moving to okay. the side and then it starts again. This is how you do those directional stitches because it's going to go over in this direction, create another bow, and then it comes over here. And that's what you're holding on to to be sure that the foot is parallel while it starts jumping. I just keep that mm -hmm, foot parallel mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. this fabric. I want to see it jump again. I, like I know that. it's like going to jump here that. again in just a minute, <laughs> and then it just kind of goes in the other direction. And of course, for heirloom sewing, we love the little bows. Right. So, oh, I, this is what I this love. This is to so watch. much fun. I'm going to slow it yeah, down a little bit yeah, so you can yeah. really see it. Now, the thing is, if you'll notice that on my linen, I don't have any stabilizer back here. It's stiff enough. I've used several spray. Uh, uh -huh spray starch layers to really build up the fabric. That way I don't have to take anything out later on. But this is what uh, directional stitching is all about. Well, this is absolutely fascinating. And I really love the look of being able to create your own fabric at a fraction of the cost. Oh. You know, Marlis, even if it weren't expensive, you sometimes just can't find it. Exactly. So that's why I love this also. And I love the little blue bows you've created. And next, Marlis has a project sewing for your baby. This adorable quilt is actually a piece of printed fabric printed with the little white squares inside the printed blue fabric. Now the technique that we're really going to emphasize today is a corded edge finish which makes a very professionally finished edge along the side of this quilt. You can see it's done in yellow on the inside and blue on the outside. While we're right here, this is so adorable the way Marlis has just done her machine stitching around the square that was printed onto the fabric and then she's done machine stippling to go in and outline the design. But what we're really going to emphasize today as I said is this beautiful professional finish the scalloped edge and then the corded scalloped edge to go along and finish it and as you know details do make the difference come on back over to the machine with me while I once again invite Marlis to share with us this incredible finish that you use both on both on the little pinafore on the on the ruffles over the sleeves as well on, as on the edge of that quilt well, you know, a lot of times we've been taught to do those scallop edges and we are supposed to cut right next to that scallop and so many times we, we get too close and we, tr we clip the thread. Well, there's a way to do this where you don't have to worry about that as much. I cannot wait, Marlis. This is so important. You want to make sure that you do your stitching around the edge of your fabric and what I've used, I've, I make sure I use the same thread top and bottom. 
Now this is a heavier cotton thread, so I make sure I use a heavier needle, or large ride needle, but I'm using a paper stabilizer because it tears away very easily. And I've got several layers down there. My next step, and let's look at this very closely here, is I've got, I trim it to about an eighth of an inch. So you can see that with my scissors, I'm not get, getting close to that satin stitching at all. You're not going to accidentally trim it. I'm not going to accidentally trim it at all. It's, this is wonderful for anything that has to be durable because that way, you know, those satin stitches are not going to flop off. You can't catch them. You're tacking them down. They're going to be there for a long time. And you've left this eighth of, an eighth of an inch because this is where your cord is going to rest in the next step. I use a gimp or sometimes I use a, a pearl cotton or something that matches. It depends on what look you want. And then I've taken a different color and run it through a special foot so that it will lay on that eighth of an inch and then when I do the, the zigzag over it, it covers it and I wow. do not have to sit and worry about trimming or doing anything else with it. Now, there, this is a specialty foot. It is a, um, what we call an applique foot or a cording foot. There's an opening in the front of the foot through which you can put your uh, cording and you just thread it through before you get ready to stitch and then you put your your machine um, on the fabric, your foot on the fabric. The thing to remember though is you've got to test first because you're going to find that you're only sewing really on half of the fabric. The other half of the foot is not got any fabric there. You want to test the stitch length. Also, it's very important because different threads are very different, so you want to test it to make sure that you're not piling the threads on top of one another. And sometimes you don't even have to have it very dense if you want the cord to show through. What I've done is I've adjusted my zigzag width to something that I like, which at this point is about 2.5 width. And then I just go ahead and let it do its stitching. At the beginning, to make sure everything's flowing just right, we just hold on to everything because remember we only have half the fabric under the foot but you can see that the cording is going exactly onto that eighth of an inch ledge that I left when I cut away the rest of the fabric. And you're just guiding that yourself. You're not you don't have a scallopy stitch on there. No, just I'm just a plain guiding zigzag. It. Okay. That way you can use this with straight mm -hmm, edges. Mm -hmm. You can use this technique on a, a lot of different things. It makes it very nice when you're doing clothing or table linens because that way they're more professionally finished and more durable. Marlis, that is really fascinating, and that is a professional finish and a really pretty one also. Yeah. Marlis, thank you so Thanks. much for being here. And next I have a technique for sewing for Jack and Jill. Beautiful edge finishes can be accomplished in many ways, as certainly you know and have seen today. This edge finish is a Madeira using the washaway basting thread. These three little motifs, the pink and the yellow, are using a technique called Madeira motifs. On down on the skirt, on this little dress for Jill, of Jack and Jill, of course, these little motifs once again show a Madeira motif, and the edge on the bottom of this skirt is a Madeira finish. Now the Madeira finishes are really very easy to do. Here I have shown the, one of the petals on this skirt. Of course I would have a whole skirt if I were making it. I have drawn off the edge of the petal of the skirt on half of the skirt only. Then I'm going to fold it like this. Then I'm going to use wash away basting thread in either the bobbin or the top of the sewing machine. I'm going to straight stitch along the edge of this petal, like this, all the way around. And then if I have curves, I'll clip them a little bit. And by the way, remember, don't forget to use your wash away basting thread in either the top or the bobbin of your sewing machine. Then I'm going to turn it right side out, which is really pretty easy to do. I'm not going to finish it there because I already have a finished one. I turn it right side out, and then I take spray starch and spray starch very heavily to make it wet the actual top of the whole skirt, and then I like to put, you know what I like to do when I spray, when I iron on spray starch? I like to put a little press cloth over it, so when I put the iron down, for sure it won't scorch since I have wet it with spray starch. Dry iron it as dry as can be, completely wet it and completely dry it, and then <clears throat> on this Madeira, I come in here and I get my little pieces and I open it up, and I go pop, 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 pop. I pull it apart, 
and if it's been completely wet and completely dried, it will pull apart so easily, just as this one has done. And I have a perfectly folded down Madeira finish. This is another way of making a beautiful edge finish. Then I attach it to the bottom of my skirt and then flip it up and you can see I have a perfectly finished edge except for one thing. I do have to stitch it down. So my next step is going to be to stitch that down with a zigzag or a Madeira stitch. Now the little motifs I showed you, showed you how to make, first of all you trace off your motifs on your fashion fabric. Then I take another piece of fabric, put it behind the motif and once again using the wash away basting thread, I straight stitch all the way around the motif and then as you can see here I trimmed the motif, clipped the edges a little bit and made a slit in the fabric part. Then I turn it once again right side out and I'm not going to do this here on camera for you because I've already done it here. You can see I've turned it right side out and then I am going to put it on my fabric as I'm getting ready to sew over here. If you would like to uh, use your uh, temporary spray, ad spray adhesive rather than a pen. You always move it over away from your fabric and then come over and glue it down. You don't ever spray your temporary spray adhesive right on your fabric or it will gum up your machine. And then I come in and I will zigzag. This one I've pinned so I'll move my pins. I come in, I simply zigzag around my motif and that's another wonderful way of finishing an edge. And now we have a really exciting presentation for you about some clever notions. You know how important stabilizers are. If you don't have stabilizers, you can't get professional looking work because your work will all pucker up. Very recently, we came out with a black stabilizer, which is fantastic for dark things. Um, whether you're working on something dark like this silk, whether you're doing a dark type of sweatshirt, or even patchwork. Um, these stabilizers come three kinds. This is the cutaway soft and sheer. It's to be used whenever you have an unstable fabric, such as a knit, a very lightweight fabric. On fairly sheer darks, too, you won't have a white showing through because of the, the dark color. The other two are cutaway soft and sheer and um, cutaway, um, excuse me, this is the cutaway soft and sheer. It also comes in totally stable and tear easy. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today my very dear friend and business colleague Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly is the author of a book, Colonial Inspirations. She also is a frequent guest designer for So Beautiful magazine. Beverly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's always wonderful to be here with you. Now, today, Martha, I have designed this christening gown for you, and I've tried to do something just a little bit different. Of course, it has all my trademark pin tucks. You can just know how I love pin tucks. So we have the pin tucks on the yoke and the back yoke, the sleeves, and this long central panel, and then around the frill. Now, you will see that underneath the lace bow, I have really quite a large rose, and this is the one that I want to talk to you about today. Um, it's a lovely bow. It's, it's a, a bit of a fiddle-diddle to do, but I think it's worth the effort. Now, you will see here that I have a double piece of silk ribbon. This was seven inches long, so it's now um, three and a half. And I have taken a piece of thread, just machine thread, and I have gathered it through. It's then been stitched into the center here. I have taken a second piece of ribbon, this time single, same length, and I've put it around here and then stitched it. And then thirdly, I've taken two colors the second colour and an even paler colour and put them in the needle at the same time and then go on all the way around here. Just a little back stitch but you can see how it is. So we're just going to look at it a wee bit here. You will see already that I have brought it through like that. The needle is still there. I've already gone ahead and gathered it up and I will then draw this up 
like this, take the needle into the back like that and then I will stitch it down. Now we'll move on to the next one here. We have our central section which is already um, stitched down. It's sitting very snugly there. You can see what a lovely big thick center it gives it. And again, as I say, I've gathered that up. I'll take that needle through to the back. I'll then pull this up. I'm just going to manipulate these, these gathers and we're going to just pull them underneath here, take them round like this and pull those back so we've got this whole thing just sitting nicely around that central section like that and then once more when we've got it where we want it to be we will then just take this needle and we will put little stitches so that this stays back underneath that central section there. Now the last step is you can see here you can see I've got these two ribbons already threaded into my needle. You'll also notice that I've got a a large needle here, it's quite a, a big fat one. And this we're now going to, you can see I've got a few twists in it, and I'm just going to take this little back stitch like that. You don't have to be too even with it. And also, I want you, as I go round, you will find that you'll have different colors. Don't have the same color on top all the time and we just here we are just going round like that and just making it look pretty. As I say you can see it is quite a big rose but I think you'll agree it really is quite beautiful and it would look wonderful on perhaps a cushion something like that where you wanted a big rose without using a folded rose. Oh Beverly it truly is magnificent and I love the ivory silk du peony and the wonderful white lace bow and this beautiful yellow shades that you use for your flower. Beverly, thank you so much for sharing that beautiful rose with us. And now won't you come along with me to my attic? <music> This beautiful christening dress is made in such an unusual manner. The sleeves do not have any sleeves, so to speak. It's, a, it's just rows of insertion and edge, excuse me, insertion, and then another little type of French insertion, 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 all the way out to the side. Now the skirt is very unusual too. As we travel down the dress, you will see sets of three tucks and some people tended to believe that in christening dresses which were for a religious occasion the three tucks meant Father, Son and Holy Spirit and as you can see the tucks go in a diagonal manner with and also insertion is in between the tucks then we have straight tucks and then we have the diagonal tucks once again and the bottom is finished with sets of three straight tucks the insertion and more tucks and then there's a beautiful double piece of very wide oh about four inch wide lace two rows around the bottom this lady that made this had wonderful access to some beautiful french laces now let me turn it around for just a second and show you the back the back of the bodice is exactly the same as the front of the bodice just really really pretty and it's closed with buttons and buttonholes and the back has a placket and then those beautiful diagonal tucks of course go all the way around the dress all the way down the back too thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today i hope you've had as much fun as i have and i would really like to invite you back next time